So for today's video, we're going to stick with the beginner coder theme, and I'm going to be talking about the bare essentials that you need to get started coding. So the first thing that you will definitely need when you get started coding, now this one's pretty obvious, that is a personal computer and a basic connection to Wi-Fi because you will need to do a ton of Googling and researching to learn things and figure things out as you go. If you don't have access to your own computer, don't worry. There are a ton of options for you to get started coding even still. You could borrow one from a friend or family member, um, maybe one that they're not using, it's just lying around. You could go online and find a used one for pretty inexpensively to get you started. Or you can find your local library or community center and see if there are options to rent laptops or you can use the computers that are available to you there. I once heard a story about a man who taught himself how to code using just a flip phone. What? Bruh. And he was able to go on to become a software engineer just from what he taught himself on his phone. So if he can do it, so can you. Once you have access to a computer and some Wi-Fi, what you'll need to do is either install or download an IDE or a text editor, or you can use one that has already been like pre-downloaded on your computer. I know my Mac came with a very basic plain text editor on it. Using a text editor like the one I use, Visual Studio Code, is a great tool when you're first getting started because it really helps format your code, keep it organized, and will display it in a visually pleasing way that makes it a lot easier to read than a plain text app that comes pre-downloaded on a computer. And as you get further in your coding journey, you'll be able to use some of the more advanced features like debugging and things like that that help you to keep your code clean and organized and tip top shape. The next thing that I suggest that you do when you are just beginning to code is find out your why. It could be for a career change or to access more opportunities in the tech industry. It could be for advancement or more opportunity in your current industry, like I mentioned in my five reasons why you need to code this year video. Whatever it is, it is a really good idea to find out what your why is when you're first getting started because if and when things get tough as you learn and as you grow your skills, your why is going to be the only thing keeping you going and keeping you motivated to continue through it. The next thing that I suggest that you have when you're first getting started is figure out a direction. Once you figure out why it is that you're learning to code, maybe figure out what specifically within coding do you want to get into. There are so many different branches of technology and coding that you can take when you're first getting started and it can get really overwhelming when you're trying to get started and get into it. Taking a little bit of time to think through what areas of coding would interest you is going to help you a ton when trying to figure out some other things like what language you want to use or what frameworks you are going to need. For example, knowing that you want to build mobile applications for iOS devices is going to give you a much narrower path into development than just going into it blindly. And don't think that you have to be that specific. Something as simple as understanding the difference between front-end development and back-end development and which one you favor over the other is going to help you to really narrow down what tools you need, what IDEs you need to download, and the resources that you need to start looking into. So do some research and if you need help figuring out what area of coding would be best suited for you or would be of most interest to you, let me know down in the description below and I can share some of my resources that I use to figure out what my focus was going to be while I coded. The next thing I would suggest, and this is something that really changed the game for me when I was just getting started, is to put a reoccurring appointment on your calendar specifically for coding. Try to find a block of time in all of your days that you have free and make that the time that you spend coding. 
when you make a commitment with yourself to continue every single day to spend a little bit of time with the code, you'll start to see a lot more progress than when you're just going to it sporadically here and there when you have free time. And another thing that you could do that goes along with scheduling an appointment for yourself is to find someone that will be your accountability partner. This isn't something that I did right away, but when I started to share my coding journey with the people around me and they started to check in on me and ask me questions about what I was learning, it made me want to make sure that I was keeping up with that schedule and making sure that I had new things to report to the people who were asking me about it. And I couldn't make this video without also including a few things that you absolutely don't have to have figured out right when you're just getting started. You do not need to commit to learning any one language when you're first getting started. If you do take some time to figure out what direction you want to take while you're learning how to code, that should already point you in the right direction of what languages are available to you to do the things that you want to do. So if you want to build mobile applications, there are specific languages that are optimal for that. Same thing with if you want to build for Android versus iOS. Understanding those little specifics will point you in the right direction for what language you need to pick. If you're interested in a video on finding the perfect language for you and what you want to get out of your coding journey, let me know down in the description below and I will definitely make that for you. You also don't need any fancy tools or equipment to get started. Aside from maybe a laptop or a personal computer, don't think that you have to go out and spend hundreds of dollars on things like special keyboards and mouses and mouse pads and stand-up desks and things like that that more advanced developers have. I am a person that typically goes out and spends a ton of money when I get a new hobby. This is not the hobby to start doing that in. Definitely get your feet wet and build up your arsenal of equipment as you go and as you find need for it. Don't go out and think you have to go on a shopping spree for a bunch of equipment that you might not even need in the end. And lastly, you do not have to go to a coding boot camp or back to school to start learning right now. Although boot camps and online schools are great, they provide support and resources to their students, it is not necessary for you to take one of those boot camps or online classes to get started. I would personally suggest, and a lot of people I know who have taken coding boot camps have suggested to me, to get your feet wet and kind of figure out your direction and what you are interested in learning before taking a boot camp. A lot of information you need is online and a lot of times coding boot camps can be very general and they might not touch on the things that you specifically want to learn. So give yourself some time for learning on your own before you jump all in and spend a ton of money on one of these solutions. I hope this video has given you some solid advice on how to get started on the right track for learning how to code. All you need is the right frame of mind, a good direction, and access to a computer with basic Wi-Fi and a text editor. That's all I had for you today, guys. Make sure you hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss another video. I'll be back with another one soon. But that's it. Love you guys.